In this video, I'm going to go through a few different topics in Python. We're going to talk about uh, how to make comments in your code. Uh, I've introduced them to you before, but we'll go through them again. We'll talk about assigning values to variables. And when we do that, we're going to talk about data types. Uh, we're going to go through some mathematical expressions you can do with them, as well as some manipulation you can do with words and strings. Uh, we're also going to talk about formatting when you print out your uh, values and a few tricks that you can do with them. I'm going to go through some slides that go through the basics of assignment, uh, just to emphasize uh, some of these concepts, which will be similar maybe to what you've done in, um, in like uh, just regular, I don't know, just writing or writing math. And then what is different about it for programming and Python in particular. So you've probably already heard about um, assignments. Assignments uh, are in, uh, you wind up doing this a lot in math. When you use an equal sign, you are assigning a value to a variable. Now, the order that you might do stuff with pen and paper is a little bit different than with Python, and I'll go through that um, with this. So you might write down y equals x squared plus 1. That means that y is going to be assigned the value of x squared plus 1, but at this time, you don't need to know what the value of x is. And then later you might say, well, x is equal to 2, and so now 2 squared is 4, plus 1 is 5. So after you've assigned some set of variables to be equal to y, you can then assign one variable to be equal to x, and then there's these calculations that you would do. And this is maybe a little bit different than you might do it in Python, uh, or in any computer program, you might use a different order. So in this case, you might first start out by assigning the value of uh, 2 to the variable x. And then you could write out y equals x squared plus 1. And at this point, uh, the computer says, well, x is equal to 2, so 2 squared plus 1 is equal to 5. I will assign the value of 5, the numerical value of 5, to y. And then if I print y to the screen, you would get 5. So... The order that you do stuff is not only different maybe in from one line to the other, but even within a single line. So on this side right here, we've got y equals x squared plus 1. But if you could hand in something to your math teacher and say, well, x squared, equal, x squared plus 1 equals y, this is totally fine. You could write x equals 2, and you could write 2 equals x if you wanted. When you write out Python, you can't do it that way. In other words, there's only one way to do it. So you can say y equals x squared plus 1, but you cannot write x squared plus 1 equals y. This line right here um, doesn't work. Same thing with x equals 2. You can't write out 2 equals x. Okay? So let's try that. We are now going to go into uh, the notebook that was shared with you, and we'll actually put some of this into action. Okay, so let's start with comments, okay? Comments are notes that you leave for yourself in your code, um, both for yourself or anybody else who might read your code to let them know what's going on. And I encourage you to leave no uh, these notes for yourself because you might be studying for a final exam or some quiz, and if you have those notes, they are going to be very helpful to you. Now, you can leave these comments either with the text cells or Python comments in your code, and we'll go through both of them. Um, the text cells, we've talked about this idea. I'm just going to quickly um, clear out all of my uh, run times really quick. Sorry. So when we make edits in our cells, we can make use of something called Markdown. It's a language, if you will, that has some really cool tricks about how to render the text differently. These are little tricks. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here. This is just one of the ways you can leave comments for your code, um, and we're going to make some edits here. What's nice about this environment is as you make the changes on the left side, you can see them on the right-hand side. 
So our edits are going to go here. If I want to make this italics, let me make the whole thing italics. All I have to do is I surround it with um, single asterisks. Now I could have, if I wanted to, just highlighted it and then gone to this little eye up here. But you'll notice that when I do, it just adds the asterisk itself. So sometimes it's faster to just type it, learn how to type it out yourself. If I want to make this bold, I put two asterisks on either side. If I want to make this bold italics, it's three asterisks on either side. And notice that you're seeing these changes on the right hand side. So as soon as we go ahead and let's say do shift enter in this cell, you'll see all those appear. Now there's a few other edits that we want to make. So let me go back into this. Uh, you could add a bullet list and by doing a bullet list, you just do asterisks and you could do first item, another asterisk, second item and so on. Um, third item. Uh, you could also do a sub item where you do a tab and then another asterisk there and this would be indented. In Dented. I can't spell. If you hit enter, it thinks that you still want to stay indented, and this would also be indented, and so on. And then you can back up and do another one, and you could have fourth item. I can't spell fourth, uh, and so on. So that's a way to do a bullet list. Now there's a whole bunch of uh, really cool links at this, um, at this link down here. It'll show you a bunch of other markdown tricks. Um, if you want to embed a link to something, uh, you can just paste in the entire URL if you want, but there's another trick to that. And I'm gonna put right in here, square bracket, helpful markdown website close the square bracket and then open parentheses around the URL. And look on the right hand side, this is now like a link. I'll let you click on it to go there and see some of the really uh, cool little tricks that uh, are available to you in Markdown. Um, in addition, you'll notice that I embedded another link right here, again, square brackets around this thing called LaTeX. LaTeX is a typesetting language that's been around, um, I should know this, but it's probably been at least 40 years or so. Um, and it allows you to do um, mathematical symbols and mathematical formulas in your code. And this is not unique to Jupyter. In fact, it's been around from way before Python um, and you can do some very cool uh, uh, documents and stuff with it. So you could write this is, and then if you do a single dollar sign, uh, you can then start typing LaTeX. So if I want the symbol pi, you can do slash pi, close the, um, uh, the dollar signs and you get pi. Um, there are other uh, Greek letters, if you will, um, and summations, so uh, like other uh, mathematical symbols. So you can do uh, symbols, ah, I can't spell symbols, like dollar sign, let's say omega, or you could do capital omega if you wanted to, um, alpha, and so on. Um, and then they all render. If you do double dollar sign, it um, centers it as if it was an equation. So you could do, let's say, let's see if I can remember this, x equals, and then you do a fraction. Um, so I wanna do minus b, pm stands for plus or minus, and then the square root is b, and then you wanna do a uh, caret for the squared minus four ac, you close the square root with a curly bracket, you close the top part of the fraction, and then you put 2a on the bottom. And if you close that out, you can see you can render the quadratic formula. Uh, so this is uh, something we'll do later on in the term, but I just show you that you can uh, render some very, very nice math. I'm gonna hit shift enter uh, to basically finish up this cell and move on. Um, so down here now, I'm going to show you a few comments, pretty much like, you know, 
everything with a hash tag in front is a comment, this means it won't be interpreted as a Python command. You know, and you can have spaces between them. This is also a comment and so on. And this is, again, very useful for leaving yourself little notes in your code, maybe to explain something that might have been a little bit confusing. So we can also have longer comments here. And I'm going to use three single quotes um, that are straight up and down. Uh, so on my keyboard, they're right next to the enter. Uh, they're right below the double quotes. Um, and this can be a much longer uh, comment on multiple lines if I need to explain a lot. And so long as I have the three little quotes at the bottom, I can run the cell. It'll actually print out what it was if there's nothing else here. But if I have after this, let's say x equals 10, it doesn't print that out the bottom. Um, and now I can have a comment that explains stuff. If you just want to comment and you don't want all that stuff to print out at the bottom, um, so you could be like, this is a more involved comment. If I wish to just do it like that, I would have this printed out at the bottom. I could suppress that print statement by putting a semicolon after this. Okay, and then I don't get that output there. Okay, so that's how you leave comments. Um, now we're gonna talk a little bit about more about assignment and data types. So we're gonna assign some values and some variables, but we've gotta talk about data types. And if you follow this link, you can read a little bit more about it. Um, Computers store stuff differently depending on the type of data uh, that your variable represents. Um, is it a number? Is it a letter or word? Is it much more complicated than that? Uh, and without getting into the details, a computer is going to use its memory differently uh, depending on what the type of data is. We'll deal with many more data types going forward, but for now we're just going to work with three different types. An integer, uh, designated as int, int a float, which is just a float, and then a string where we use a shortened str for string. But let's look at what each of these are. An integer is a whole number without any decimal or fractions, just as, if you, just as uh, when you learned it in your math class, and it can be positive or negative. Um, there are integers that are only positive. Those are called unsigned integers, but we're not going to worry about those right now. A float, uh, or short for floating point number, is a number with a decimal. And if you want to try to uh, know, like, have some sort of like, like mental picture of why that is to help you remember the name, you can think of it as a decimal that can float around the number, move around in it. And that can also be positive or negative. And then str, which is a string, is text. That means it holds words and individual characters. When I say characters, I mean letters. Now, those characters can be numbers, uh, like you can have a character for the number one or the number two, but you can't use them in mathematical expressions, and we'll elaborate on this below. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign some numbers and text to some variables, and we'll print them to the screen to see what we get. So the first thing we're going to do is an integer, um, and this will be x equals 10, and we'll print x. And then after that, you'll see me doing this a lot. Um, I'm going to have a little uh, print open close parentheses after that uh, so that we can just have a blank line to keep stuff uh, uh, easier to see. I'm going to do control enter to run this so I stay on the line so I don't jump. And you'll see that the 10 appears below. I can do a float. And I'm going to just show uh, that I can reassign a different value, even a different type to x. Uh, some people don't like this in the Python programming language, uh, but I found it to be fairly useful. So here I'm going to do 10.0. And this is effectively the same number, uh, but it will get stored differently. And if I print it, you'll see that um, I get 10.0. Now I can also do a string. I'm going to scroll a little bit. 
And here I can do x equals 10. This would be the normal way. And I can do double quotes or single quotes with this. And then if I print x, I get the number 10. Now, I mentioned that you can have a character that represents numbers. Let me emphasize, show you what I mean. I can do x equals, and then I'll have in double quotes, 10. And if I print x, it looks like 10. And if you just print it to the screen, you couldn't actually tell whether or not that was a, string, a float or an integer. Well, maybe not a float, but an integer or a string. So let's see what happens if I try to do math with the string. I will do x equals 10. Again, this is going to be a string. And if I type y equals x plus 2, let's see what happens. <gasps> I get an error. And that's because I can't add strings and integers together. However, watch what happens when I do this. So I can't add an integer to a string. Okay, what happens if I do x times 2? Well, let's see. If I do x times 2, I get two tens right next to each other. 10, 10. So it treated this as if it was just like words, which it is. I could do um, x times 20 uh, and run that, and then I'll get 20 tens like that. But it's not treating this as a number, so I still can't add a value to that. So that's the difference between these ints, floats, and strings. In other languages, if you've learned another language, sometimes you have to put like an uh, you have to do something like in maybe some other language. You might have to do int x equals 10. Uh, but you don't actually have to do that. Um, and then there's one other thing that uh, you can do. You can actually turn some of these uh, values into others. Uh, I'm only realizing now I should have made a cell for that. So I'm going to ask you to, uh, down here or wherever, I'm going to add an extra code cell. And you can turn one type into another by casting it. So let me show you what I mean. I can do x equals 10. And then I could do y equals float 10. And then, OK, you say, well, nothing seemed to happen. So we can do this. We can print the type. and. If we do type and then in parentheses x or type in parentheses y, it'll show you that x is an integer and y is a float. And this can sometimes affect how your numbers um, are, are used in your different mathematical um, expressions. I'll just make a note. Now, what I'm about to show you doesn't always work, but if you had x equals 10, can you cast it as, let's say, an integer? <gasps> Looks like you can. And so, oops. Actually, let me make that move. So you can do print. Now, can we do, like, let's say, z equals y plus 2. Print z. So x was a word, if you will, 10. y is the integer value of that. And then can I work with y now? And it turns out you can once it is cast. So this is casting one as another. You can also assign multiple variables at once. So you could do a comma b comma c equals 10 comma 20 comma 30 if you wanted to. Then you could do print a comma b comma c. All of them are assigned in one go. Um, and you can also change the type. And I think I uh, did this earlier, but I will just emphasize. I can do x equals 10, print type of x. 
And then I could do x equals 10, print type of x. And when I do that, I'll see that it's initially an int and then later it's a string. And you cannot do this in some computer languages. Once you define uh, in some computer languages a variable as an integer, you cannot do it. You cannot change that type. And this could be a problem if you're like, oh yeah, x is an integer. You forget you did it as a string and you're like, haha, y equals two times, or let's say no, we don't want to do that because that would work. Uh, if we wanted to do y equals two plus x um, and you forgot that it turned into a string, um, you would get an error down here because you're trying to, trying to do both. You're trying to, sorry, add an integer to a string. So I'm going to comment this out and rerun that cell just to get rid of that error. Um, there's also a few characters uh, that do special things. So if you want to do something more sophisticated uh, with your uh, strings, you can do a new line with slash n, and you can do a tab uh, with slash t. So if I was to do, let's do words equals, you know, once upon a mid night dreary. And then if you do slash n, it actually will print out a new line. So let's see, once upon a midnight dreary, while I wandered weak and weary. And if I run this, it'll, uh, well, we don't see anything that time. But if I now print words, I get this new line. So even though these were all assigned as one line, this slash n in the middle gives us a new line. And then we can do uh, tabs also. So let's say I do words equals, let's see, what's a good thing to do? Um, these words, and then I can do slash T, and that'll tab over, are my own. Um, and then I could do a new line, and then these, and then I could do, this is by Natasha Bedingford, I think. I should have looked that up beforehand. Uh, so this slash t will be a tab, and then I'll print these words. So you see you get this tab, uh, and depending on the computer you're on, uh, this tab might be four spaces, or it looks like in this case, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I think it's eight spaces, um, but uh, we already typed into the, to the next one. So it could be four spaces or eight spaces. So that's what the slash T for tab is, okay? All right, and you can also access individual letters or characters inside a string if you know where they are. Uh, if you, it's called indexing. Um, indices, which is plural of index, always start at zero. So let me assign, uh, let me write some words. I'll show you how this works. Um, so the words that I'm going to use are, um, Let's see, um, one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them. And then we can access all these words. So let me print the words. I'll print a little blank space. And if I want the first letter, I do words and then I do square bracket zero. So let me now make some comments for myself. Print the first letter. And that's not a zero, that's an O because it's one ring to rule them all. So we can do more, we can print these. Let's do the third letter. So the third letter, we go zero, one, two. So E is the third letter. 2 would get us the third letter. So again, each one of these letters has a place in this entire sentence, if you will. And we can figure out uh, if we want to print them out by just counting where they are. Um, and again, we start at 0. So let's suppose we wanted to now access the T here in 2. We would start at the beginning and count uh, starting at zero to figure out where it is in this, what its index is. So we would start at O and we'd go zero, one, two, 
The space here counts as three. Spaces count as characters. Four, five, six, seven, eight for another space, nine for the T. So to print the first T in two, we would print words nine. And then we get the T down there. Okay. Um, we can even access chunks of these. So let me get these same words here. I'm just going to cut and paste this down here. We can access slices of these strings with a colon um, uh, dividing up uh, the start and stop. So let me show you what we do. I'll make a comment. So if we want from index uh, n or m, let's say, to index n, we type words, and then we do m for the beginning, colon, and then we actually do n plus 1 because it, it stops just before, the, um, uh, just before the final number that's in the index. So let me print the words. So let's suppose we wanted to pull out the rule. We know that t is at 9, 10 for the 0, space, sorry, uh, let's see, 9, 10, 11, and then r is 12. And then we have a colon, and so we go 13, 14, 15. We want to get the e in rule, so we actually don't type, type 15 here, we do 16. So this will stop just before that last number. And so if I print that out, I'll get rule. And there's a couple of other little tricks to this colon uh, thing. If we just start at the beginning, we can do um, print words. And then we don't even have to put anything. If we just want to start at the beginning, we don't even need to put zero. We can just do colon. And then if we wanted to get 1, we'd do 0, 1, 2. Uh, and then we just have to go one higher than that to 3. And if we want to go to the end, uh, I'll put a little space here. Uh, I'm not going to try to count this, but if we want to go to the end, we don't need the second number. Number. We do print words, uh, I don't know, I'll just start at like 16, and then you do colon, and it'll go from whatever 16 is all the way to the So you can also uh, start at the end if you want. So to get the last letter, um, we can use negative numbers. Dun, 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 negative numbers for the index. So I could do print words, and then I do minus 1, and I get the M uh, at the very end here for one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them. If I want the E at the very end, I use minus 2. And then I would get those. And you can use this in slicing if you want. So if I wanted to get the them, I could uh, just do minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 to get from the fourth last to the end. I could do print words minus 4 colon, and then it would just go all the way to the end. So use go minus 4 in the index, and then go from there to the end. And we'll use this more when we learn more about arrays and lists. OK, so let's talk about math. Basic Python has some basic math already installed. We can do addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. We can do exponents. Uh, you'll find that often you may wind up not using your calculator. You'll use open up a Colab notebook to do your calculations. So for instance, I can do, we've already done this, but I'll just go through it again. I'll assign a value of 10 to x. Um, I'll do y equals x plus uh, 20. And then I can print x and y. Um, and if I do that, 
and I get it's 10 and 30. I'll put a little extra line after that for comparison. Uh, for subtraction, I'll do x equals 10. I'll do y equals 20. And then I will do, or I'll do 20 minus x. And then I'll do print x and y. So 20 minus x is 10. And just to point out, you could also do x minus 20. And you can get negative numbers. That's totally fine. Uh, we could do x equals 32 and y equals 64. Uh, z equals x times y. Uh, you can have spaces between them or not. It's entirely up to you. And you could print x, y, and z. And you just get 32, 64, 2048. Let me put another space uh, there for when it prints. Yeah. Okay. We can do division. We could do x equals 32. We could do y equals 64 again. Uh, and then you could do z equals x divided by y. Print x comma y comma z. 32, 64, and then 0. 0.5. Uh, and, you know, it can handle, like it doesn't, you know, these can be floats if you want. I'm just putting a bunch of random numbers here, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then you can get much more complicated uh, decimal expressions. If you want to do exponents, you use two asterisks. Um, so x equals uh, 2, y equals 10. Z equals 2 to the 10. So 2 uh, t and then 10, uh, or sorry, 2 asterisks and then the 10. Print x comma y comma z. I'm just going to go back up here. I forgot to do a little blank line just to make things a bit easier to read. And so we get 2 raised to the 10 is equal to 1,024. OK. Uh, and as always, uh, well, not as always because I haven't said this yet, uh, parentheses are your friend. I'm just going to add a little something here. Parentheses are your friend. Um, so if you're concerned about order of operations, just put parentheses around it. So you could do z equals 2 raised to the like 4 divided by 3. Um, maybe you want the four thirds uh, calculated first, and then you do times, um, I don't know, 12. You put that whole thing in parentheses, print z. Again, I'll do a little space up there. Um, yeah, so nothing wrong with using parentheses. Uh, I overuse them sometimes, but just because I don't trust myself to keep track of order of operations. Okay. There's also a shorthand for incrementing a variable. Incrementing means like adding one to it, but it turns out you can add more to these variables or you want to provide an or perform an operation on the variable and then reassign it to the new variable. So let's do this. We do x equals um, 10 and then you can do uh, x plus equals 1. And what we did is we added 1 to the previous value of x, reassigned it and so now you'll see that the value of x is 11. Because we started with 10, we did this plus equals. Um, let me put a little space. We can do the same thing to add 10 to the variable. So I'll do x equals 10, x plus equals 10. If I print x, I get 20. Because I started with 10 and I added to it. If I want to subtract 5, I'll again start this uh, at 10. I'll do x minus equals 5. So I've subtracted 5 from x. x now has the new value, which is going to be 5. Oops, why do I type 5? So now it's 5. I can uh, multiply the variable by 12 x times equals 12, 120. And I can divide the variable by 4. Uh, so I could do x equals, let's do a float. Um, so 5 point blah, 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 blah. I just type a bunch of random numbers. x divided by equals 4. 
I print x and it's 1.3097, blah, blah, blah. I just typed a bunch of numbers here. Um, so this plus equals, minus equals, times equals turns out to be very useful. And you can use this incrementing approach for strings as well, like adding something to it. Uh, so let's say I do words equals one. I'll do one space. I could then do words plus equals ring space. Words plus equals two space. Words plus equals rule space. Words plus equals them and so on. Words plus equals all. Okay. And if I print this out, uh, so I will just show you at the beginning here, words initially is just one uh, word here. It's one. And then I keep adding to it and I get um, all the things that I've added to it. Now, you can call your variables whatever you want. I've used words here. Uh, because I'm using words, I like variable names that are descriptive. It tells you that this is going to hold words. But this could be, I could go through, I'm just going to copy this just to show you. I'm going to cut and paste. I could have called this all x. And I could have called the this variable mat if I wanted. Like the fact that I've called it words doesn't mean that it has to be a string. Um, I have just choose to use this variable because then it reminds me of what's actually stored there. But I could use any variable name if I wanted. Um, okay, so going back to the math part of this, you know, if you have exponents, you can do square root. So if x equals 100, I could do print. I don't have to assign it to a variable. I could do x raised to the 1 half. So x raised to the 1 half is the same as doing the square root of 100. I could also do the cube root if I wanted. Um, so I could do x raised to the 1 third. That would be the cube root of 10, 4.64. Uh, and then just to kind of like prove to you that that is the cube root, um, if I take the cube root of 8, I should get 2. So 8 raised to the 1 third power, that's the cube root. That's two. You can also take the remainder of a number. This is called modulo arithmetic. Uh, and you use a percent sign for this. So if I say x equals 10, y equals x, and then percent 2 means what is the remainder of x divided by 2? And this will not be that interesting, but it's 0. Now, what if I wanted the remainder of x divided by 4? Well, 10 divided, sorry, 10 divided by 4 uh, is 2 with a remainder of 2. So I get remainder of 2. And this modulo arithmetic, I'll add a little uh, note here. You should, too, this is used in something called modulo arithmetic. Matic, matic. There we go. And Python can handle really big numbers. So I could do uh, print two raised to the, let's say, 20 power. That's pretty big. How about two raised to the 100 power? Pretty good. How about two raised to the 2,000 power? Whoa. And now it kind of like goes off of this. So you can try to crash uh, <clears throat> Google if you want by running this to like a huge number. Uh, Google won't actually crash. It'll just like close your, um, you, it'll crash your individual runtime. Then you'll have to go back to runtime here and do restart runtime uh, to get it working. Uh, but it can handle very large numbers. Okay. Okay.
So there are more complicated mathematical functions in other libraries. We will discuss libraries in more detail. Right now, I'm just going to show you how to use them. Um, so for now, you would want to import these libraries from other, sorry, import these functions from other libraries. And we're going to use the math function. And so right here, I'm going to import the math, sorry, not the math function, but the math library. Um, import math. And when we do that, we can access a whole bunch of math functions. Um, I'll show you much more complicated ones. So I run this, and now down here, I can do things like um, x equals math.pi. That's not really a function. Um, it's a number. But then I could do print math dot sign of x. And I get something that's pretty close to zero. This is actually 1.222 blah blah times 10 to the negative 16th power. So let's do something besides something that's not just zero. Let's do math dot cosine of x, which is the value of pi, and we get negative one. Uh, we could do this is pi divided by four. And we get the value of that. That's 45 uh, degrees. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different things in math. So instead of just importing math, and again, we'll go through this in uh, more detail. Let me add a, a code cell here. Let's do this. From math import pi, and then these are all going to have commas after them, cos sine, um, and let's do log, and I think exp exponent. Actually, instead of exponent, uh, let, no, let's do exponent. Okay. So I run this cell and now those are all imported. And so now I can have, I can start using all of these without typing the math dot. So I could do print um, cosine of pi divided by eight. There it is. Uh, I will do a little space. I could do print uh, cosine of sine of um, pi divided by 12. Notice that Colab is putting all these parentheses in for me. There's that number. Uh, this log here is base E. It's actually the natural log. So you can do print um, log of just put a bunch of numbers in, do that. If you need to do logarithmic functions. Uh, and then you can do the exponential. This exp is actually e to some power. So just to demonstrate that, I'll do print exp of 1. And you get 2.718. That's the transcendental number e. But of course... You could do exp of you know some other value if you wanted, uh, and it does all that. So if you want these more complicated math expressions, you'll get them from math. We'll find that you can find these in other libraries as well, uh, and this is incredibly useful uh, for much of the work that uh, many of you will be doing, whether it's data scientists, physicists, actuarial scientists, and so on. Um, there are more uh, uh, sophisticated ways to output your print statements. One of them is called f-strings. And I'll let you follow that link. I'll try to post a few more uh, resources for you. Uh, but it's a way of formatting the outputs, uh, which means how things are laid out when you print it. So there's regular print statements. Uh, so you could do x equals 10, y equals 20. You could print... You know, the value of x is, and then you can have a comma, um, x, then you can put that there, and you can have, and the value of y is, you can have y, and you get those all laid out like that. Um, <clears throat> you can also add the variables in line in your text using f strings. So let me show you how to do this. You can do print. And then you have an F here before the quotes. So that is very important. The F is after the parentheses, but before the quotes. 
And so here you do f equals the value of x is, and then you have open curly bracket, x close curly bracket, and the value of y is, and then you put the y, move that out of the way, in curly brackets as well, and you get the value of x is 10, the value of y is 20. And let me show you one more thing with this. I'm going to cut and paste this down here. And instead of printing this, I could do words equals. And then I've got the F and then the qu quotes. And then everything else is the same. And then I could print words. And then I'll have a little slash N just to put it on a new line. And then I'll have words here. And that's everything all printed out. Oh, I forgot my F here. Ugh, I always do that. I need the F, otherwise it doesn't work. So actually, that's a good point. Let me emphasize this. If I just print it like this, I don't actually see the words printed out. I need the F at the beginning here. And you could always, if you wanted to, just print words once they're all assigned to this string. So this F string right here doesn't have to be just used in a print statement. You can use it when assigning a more complicated set of words and values to some variable. Okay. And the last thing uh, I'm going to show you is that you can control how many decimal places you have. So <clears throat> let's do this. Um, let's do X equals uh, 3.14. 159 and then I'm going to print X and we get all of those but let's suppose I only wanted the first two variables um, I will provide some links for the um, details of this if you want to look up more but I can use an F string so I do F and then I do quotes and then in the brackets I would just do X and if I just do that I get 3.14159 but if in the curly brackets, I have a colon, I could do 0.2 F. The F means I'm going to have uh, the X is going to be a float. And the 0.2 means two decimal places after the decimal. So I get 3.14. And there's other things you can do with this to left justify, right justify. I could change this to three, and then I get three decimal places. Uh, you can uh, pad this uh, if you have zeros at the beginning. If you do more decimal places, let's say 13, you just get a bunch of zeros after that as well. Okay? So there's a lot you can do uh, with F strings. Um, I hope uh, that this just gives you some insight into all the different things you can do with both assignment, uh, printing, and formatting. And we will be using this over the course of the semester. So don't worry if not all of this stuck with you. We are going to be practicing this on a weekly basis. Okay. Uh, take care, everybody. See